Let's take our next question tonight. It's from Julianne Finney on Skype in Blair Athol, South Australia. Good evening. Good evening. My question is for Minister Chester. Minister, in the last recent times, we've had more than 600 veteran deaths by suicide. This year, we've had 41, with at least six in the last fortnight. Minister, current solutions are not working, current legislation's not working. Mm -hmm. And the National Commission for De Commissioner for Defence and Veteran Suicide does not go far enough. It begins with a review for the 18th time into past suicides. Minister, we need to give hope to veterans that are currently living and investigate what has gone wrong so that current veterans can have wellbeing, accountability and justice. What is it that your government is afraid of in having a royal commission into past suicides? And Julianne, just before we go to the minister, can you explain why you feel so strongly about this? Absolutely. I am the mother of David Finney. David Finney was a remarkable, decorated sailor who served for 20 years. Last year, he took his life. He had issues. He did not get the help he needed from the ADF or DVA. I believe this needs to be researched and investigated very thoroughly for all veterans that have gone. Darren Chester, how do you respond? Well, first, Hamish, can I say to any veterans who are listening tonight who are uh, disturbed by my answer or Julianne's uh, question that Open Arms is available on 1800-011-046. That's 1800-011-046. That's a veterans counselling service for anyone uh, with mental health concerns who may need some assistance. I do know Julianne, and I'm just so sorry I never get to meet her son, David. I had the chance to meet uh, Julianne last, uh, last year. Uh, in, uh, in South Australia and also had the chance to meet her again in Canberra and arranged for her to meet the Prime Minister to talk about uh, her concerns about the way David's case was handled. Can, I want to say more broadly, first of all, Hamish, that for the vast majority of men and women who serve in the Australian Defence Force, it is the proudest moment of their life. Uh, they make a great contribution. They can help people who can't necessarily help themselves. They place themselves in harm's way. For the majority of them, they transition well with those skills of leadership and resilience and teamwork and problem solving. But for some, and it is only some, they have uh, physical or mental health issues which demand our support. Uh, as a government and as an Australian community, we have obligations on behalf of a grateful nation to provide that support. So I am proud to say that as Australians, we do support our veterans. And there's about, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a round figures, about $11.5 billion dollars uh, provided through my department to support about 300,000 veterans and their families each and every year. But that's not going to help Julianne, who's lost a son, and the 419 other people who have lost uh, their sons or daughters uh, since 2001. And what we announced earlier this year was, for the first time, uh, the Prime Minister announced a, a National Commissioner into Veteran Suicide and, and, and Defence Force Suicide. And that is giving uh, a new independent agency the capacity, the, the same powers, as a Royal Commission, as an enduring legacy to these poor souls who somehow lost hope, who didn't have the support when they needed it, who didn't with respect, get though, Minister, uh, does, through the other side of their demons. Does that role look back at past suicides and investigate the reasons why? Yeah. Or does it only look... Sad, uh, sad, please go ahead. Sad, sadly, Hamish, sad, sorry, Hamish, sadly it, it's got a rich case history. Look back to 2001, so there's 419 between... Uh, 2001 and, and 2016. So the new commissioner, once that person is appointed, will have the power to look back on those legacy cases, if you like, make recommendations to me as a minister. So it's independent of my department. It's not in my department. It's in the Auditor General's department. Uh, Legislation has been introduced to Parliament as well on this point, and it's been it's received bipartisan support. That person will then be able to make recommendations uh, to me, uh, looking looking back at those cases, but also looking forward to things that need to change. And again, I just want to say, for anyone who's disturbed by the conversation, there is help available, there is support available. I'm not saying for a second we've got it all right. I'm not saying for a second that we haven't let some veterans down in the past. But the, we are learning as a nation when it comes to mental health issues. The, the scourge of suicide in our community is something that uh, I think erodes away at us all. Uh, no suicide is acceptable to me as a minister and no suicide is acceptable to the Australian community. And I'm sorry, Julianne, that you've had to raise this with me in such a public way. But I can assure you, Julianne, that the, the Parliament, your Prime Minister and myself and the Secretary of my department 
are working to try and make sure no one else suffers the same grief you've suffered. Uh, Julianne, just briefly, do, does that deal with some of your concerns, the fact that this Absolutely new role will, will in fact look back? No. They are doing an 18th review. It is a one-off review. We need investigations so that veterans that are now living can have accountability. They need to be heard. They don't need to be told by this government that we will investigate your story, but we will only investigate your story if you suicide in the future. If this is bigger and better than a Royal Commission, why did we not put it out there for the disability sector, for the aged care sector and for the recent bushfires? We didn't put it out there because this government certainly wants to cover up what has happened in the way of criminality and corruption. We need a Royal Commission. And my question was, what are you afraid of? Darren Chester, just an opportunity to respond to that before we move on. Well, I, I, I don't want to have an argument with Julianne on live television simply to say that the new commissioner has the capacity or have the power to look back at all previous cases dating back to 20, 2001, as I described, mm -hmm. and make recommendations to me on how we can address this very difficult issue. And, and again, to any veteran troubled by these conversations, please reach out to your mates. There is help available through Open Arms and through the support networks which exist within the ex-service community. All right, Julianne, we appreciate your time tonight and uh, sharing your story with us. As the Minister mentioned just then, uh, if you do need support, there's a range of services available to you. The numbers are on the uh, screen right now. Uh, Lifeline and Open Arms, which is specifically for veterans uh, and their families.